Hi there, welcome back. Today I want to show you one of my favorite little appetizers, little or hot hors d'oeuvres, mini egg rolls. To make the mini egg rolls, you're going to need just a few ingredients. Um, and what's really nice about this is that all the ingredients are vegan. So there's no animal byproduct at all in this. So you can really um, meet the needs of a lot of different tastes and lifestyles by when you make these. Um, so you're going to need a pack of wonton wraps. So not the large egg roll wraps, but the wonton size, the smaller, okay? You're going to need a clove of garlic. So not the whole bowl, just one clove we're going to use off of this. And you need some fresh ginger root. Uh, we won't use this whole piece, probably about two tablespoons worth. You also need eight ounces of cabbage. Now I used the already pre-shredded coleslaw mix in a bag that you can get in your grocer's um, uh, fresh fruit and vegetables department um, but you can certainly shred your own and then that way if you don't want to have like the purple cabbage and the carrot in it you can go with something else I like this one because it's quick easy and convenient and then you're also going to need four ounces of bean sprouts these were fresh mung beans um, however if you can't get the fresh ones at your grocery store you can always use the canned ones that you drain the liquid off they work just as well uh, you'll also need some olive oil for cooking, some fresh cracked ground black pepper, some kosher salt. You could also use some soy sauce if you want, but I tend to use that more like when I'm dipping for, for eating than, than adding too much sodium. Um, and you'll also need to either, um, I, I'm going to pan deep fat fry these, but you could use your own fryer. You can use, um, you can use an air fryer. You can bake these off in the oven. It's really uh, up to you. All right, so um, the last two ingredients you need to get ready are the garlic and the ginger. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do that. Um, and I'm going to use my micro plane, which is really nice. Um, it has very sharp little teeth on it, so you want to be careful with your knuckles. Um, but it's great for, for doing things like garlic and ginger. Um, also, very hard cheeses. Maybe like if you had fresh nutmeg, you wanted to, to, um, to grate into something. This is a great tool. If you don't have this, you could also use a mini chopper. You could use a chef knife and just mince really small. Um, really, the sky's the limit. Also, you can typically get both ginger and garlic already pre-crushed and in jar form. All right, so I'm gonna take off just one garlic clove. Remember, not the full bulb. I did have a student once think that this was a clove. This is the bulb, this is the clove. So we just wanna go with one. Um, those little papers on the outside are a bit tedious to try to peel off, so the best way to try to do it is to simply just give it a little bit of a tap with your chef knife um, just to loosen the pieces, and then it comes off much more easily. Typically it does. Let's try that again. There we go. Have to put a little bit more elbow grease in that. And I'm just going to go right onto this little saucer I have here. Just grate it on. Now, if you love garlic, you could probably put a little bit more in if you like it. If, however, garlic's not your thing, you could really omit it. I personally think it really brings out the flavor in this hot hors d'oeuvre, um, but it's really a matter of choice. Some people just don't go in for that. For the ginger, I'm just going to kind of estimate. Um, you can take the back of a regular teaspoon to get the skins off this. I'm going to just use a regular paring knife today and pare the skin off. So I'm just going to take a piece about yay big um, for about two tablespoons. By the time I get off the outside um, where they cut it, there's a bit of a dry piece. I don't want to use that, so I cut that off. And I'm just going to pare off with this paring knife the outside skin. It's pretty easily done. All right, and I'm going to also use the microplane for this piece here. Ginger is typically found in your produce department in your grocery store, and it's typically not kept under cold, just like the garlic. So you'll find it um, in the bins near potatoes and onions and that sort of thing. And so you don't have to refrigerate it when you get it home. 
if you just put it in with your other items, it should stay fresh for quite a while. Okay. All right. I'm gonna start to heat my pan. So I wanna put it on medium high heat um, and get it hot. And then I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of olive oil. You could use vegetable or canola oil, whatever you have on hand. Peanut oil works well uh, too. I just traditionally, typically seem to just work with olive oil the most and I always seem to have it on hand. Right, now that my pan's good and hot, I'm adding my ginger and my garlic. Oh, that smells good. And I just want to let this get to be a little bit golden brown, start to smell the, the aromatic fragrance to it, and then I'm going to add my cabbage. Um, the cabbage is going to take a little bit longer to cook than the bean sprouts, so I'll hold off a little bit on those. Okay, so it's nice and golden brown. At this point, I'm going to add my cabbage mix. Now I am making these vegan. You don't have to, however. If you'd like to put a little bit of ground pork in there, a little ground chicken, or even those teeny tiny baby uh, shrimps that come in a can, you could do that as well. Um, but a lot of times I make these as a part of a selection of hors d'oeuvres, and so I like to offer something that's vegetarian, in this case, vegan. big piece. If I find any large pieces, I tend to pull them out because these are mini egg rolls and the big pieces tend to really give you some trouble when you're trying to roll. Also, if you have a wok, I couldn't be more excited for you to use it for this. It's just another way to do a little stir fry in. Um, but I'm doing pan frying today just to show that you don't have to have any really special equipment to do this. All right, I feel like it's cooked down sufficiently that it's now time, I'd say it's about halfway cooked through, that I'm gonna add the bean sprouts and I'm gonna season with the salt and pepper. It's gonna be on the drier side. You don't want it to have a lot of oil in there and you don't really want it to be wet. So just keep an eye on it. This is one of those things you kind of need. You can't like walk away from this when it's cooking. You need to give it your full attention just so that it's not gonna stick and burn on the bottom. Cause I don't wanna add any extra oil to it. All right, we'll give it some nice kosher salt. I always say don't be stingy, but don't overdo it. Some grind some pepper in there. A nice, another nice addition to it is um, the Chinese five spice season also makes a nice flavor for this as well. If you happen to, to like that, I'm just going to cook it down a little bit further. All right, so it's been cooking all together probably six or seven minutes, um, and it's sufficiently wilted down. You don't want it to have, you don't want to overcook it that it's mush, but you don't want it to have any real sharp edges to it because that's going to make it hard to roll them. So um, I would say they're just a little bit past the al dente stage, which is that to the tooth bite. Um, this is a little bit more well wilted. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn off the stove and I'm going to remove it from the heat and allow this filling to cool so that I don't burn myself when I'm rolling up the little mini egg rolls. Okay, so I let um, my filling cool in the freezer. I laid it out on a sheet pan and put it in the freezer for about five or six minutes to, to chill it off. I didn't want it to freeze. I just wanted to cool it enough so I don't hurt myself when I'm trying to roll the mini egg rolls. So I have a little station set up here for me. One station is for preparing the mini egg rolls 
and the other station is for frying. Again, there's a lot of options in this. You may have your own deep fat fryer, which is ideal because you just simply drop it into the oil and it usually has its own basket for removal. Um, or you can use an air fryer. You can even uh, bake them off in the oven. If you do bake them off in the oven, um, I would suggest doing that at about 425 degrees and I would brush them probably with just a little bit of oil um, just gently before they go in so that um, they're gonna have more of that egg roll texture that you're accustomed to. I have um, the old school way of doing it, which is I have a pot and I've put in about two inches of oil in here. Um, mine was just a regular vegetable oil. Um, I have a thermometer so that I can tell. I want it to be somewhere about 325 degrees. And then I also have a, a, a rack with a sheet pan so that I can put them out there after they've cooked. Um, and I have a spider, which is a nice little tool for, for getting in there to get stuff out. Remember that you would not want to use the same sheet pan for both the uncooked and the cooked egg rolls. That's why I have two. Um, if you don't have that many pans in your kitchen at home, you can always just grab a few paper plates. Um, they work well for the prep. They also work, work well to put some paper towels down to allow the oil to be absorbed when they come out of the hot grease. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and show you how to make them. And typically I put out a few at a time. Keep in mind that these wrappers can get a little bit crispy on you if they sit out to too much air. So um, I try to leave them in their same package. You can see where I've just opened three sides of the package and keep it closed. Um, and I'm gonna work on a cutting board, but you could work right on a clean countertop if that's what you have. Um, this makes about two dozen, give or take. Sometimes I get a little bit more or a little bit less depending on if I'm too heavy handed. So I'm gonna lay out 12 at a time. This way I also find that the process is much quicker to do it more assembly line and also I find that I can be a lot more consistent in what I'm doing. You need to brush them with a little bit of water, a little cool water to help make that glue. These have a little bit of flour and cornstarch on the outside so it acts like a little bit of a paste to, um, to seal them together. Not a lot of water, just basically wet the paintbrush the, the brush that you have and just daub as much off as you can and just go over it because you don't want them to be soaked. And additionally, oil, hot oil does not like water. So you're gonna find that you're just going to have more trouble when you're deep fat frying these if you've overdone it with too much moisture. Now, if you decide you wanna prep up a bunch of these and you're not gonna cook them off all at one time, um, they freeze beautifully. You just simply need to put them in a closed uh, airtight container so that they don't get freezer burnt or get any like uh, dry edges. All right, I'm gonna use my fingers. So I'm just gonna add a little dollop to the center. Alrighty, so I filled them all. It's pretty simple. All you're gonna do, take the sides of the wrapper, roll it in, well, really fold it, I guess. Then come up from the bottom and roll it the rest of the way up. All right. And then put it onto the sheet pan, seam side down. And you're gonna do this for each one until you've done them all. And you can see, they're basically just a little bite. They're gonna be one or two bites when you get them. They're gonna be, you know, meant to be as a part of a selection of, of hors d'oeuvres. And you can see I got quite a few more than I anticipated. Um, typically I get about 24. Um, I don't know if I was just heavy handed this time or what, but I did get about three dozen of them, which I'm not sad about. Like I said, I'm only gonna fry a few off and they'll freeze beautifully so I can pull them out. Um, today is Thursday, so if on Sunday afternoon we're hanging by the pool and we feel like something to nibble on, I can get the fryer together and just pop them in. 
All right, so my, my deep fryer is good to go and I'm gonna put just a couple in. Um, if you are uncomfortable putting them in with your hands, grab a pair of tongs or some slotted spoon to put them in. I'm really pretty uh, good. Um, don't drop them from up high, but I'm comfortable to put them in. Um, don't overload the pot either. Uh, maybe, maybe eight at a time. We're just going to wait till they get golden brown and I'm going to take them out with the spider and let them drain on the rack. Um, these should be served at warm, I, but if they would sit out um, on your buffet, you don't necessarily have to keep them in a warming pan, in a chafing dish to keep them to keep them hot. They're just as good at room temperature and remember since there's no meat in them, they have a little bit more time uh, before they we have to be concerned. Alrighty, so golden brown all right and that's all of them So I want to show you how I will serve this and really you can do it in any way you, if you have a lot of them and you need a larger platter. I'm just going to do a small one here. I've laid out just a few romaine lettuce leaves and I have a small dish here um, and I'm going to put some, this is sweet chili sauce. You can serve really anything you like with it, hot sauce, uh, Chinese mustard, duck sauce, soy sauce, you name it. Uh, I just like to go with this one because I'm not really one of those people that likes really hot and spicy and this just adds a nice little um, contrast to what's going on. And a little sauce. Oh, I need some tongs. them out. They are hot right out of the fire, so I didn't want to grab them with my hands. The lettuce is nice. Not only does it make it look pretty, it also picks up any of more drippings from the fat, um, if there is any. They're super crispy and super delicious. And they're vegan so they're just tiny little delicious morsels of goodness everybody's gonna love them and like I said you can customize them any way that you like um, mini egg rolls thanks for joining me today